and a very good Sunday evening to my friends from Brumley Baptist Church. Hope that you are well. Hope that your day has been wonderful. Mine certainly has. Being in God's house and with God's people is always uh, the best place to be, and so uh, I enjoyed our time together. Pray that you did as well, and I'm glad that you joined me this evening. We're going to look at the pattern of sanctification. This is our last passage in the book of Second Corinthians. It's not our last study, uh, necessarily. We're going to probably break this up into a couple parts and then maybe come back one last time and just summarize some of the things that we've learned through this study, but we've been over a year going through Second Corinthians, and I have enjoyed the labor of doing that, and I pray that you have as well. Sanctification, as has been said multiple times recently, is the goal every pastor has for his flock. It's the goal every teacher has for his class. It's the goal every parent has for his children. Grow to be like Christ. Uh, there is nothing better, and so that's what we are always striving for. And in these last verses, 11 through 14, Paul gives us a little bit of insight into what that will look like at the end of his letter to his uh, dear friends in Corinth. All the way through this list, repentance, discipline, authority, authenticity, obedience, integrity, we have looked at several examples, several words that have been descriptors of what sanctification should look like in the lives of believers. It should look a little different from person to person based on talents, gifts, and abilities, and things of the sort, but it should also look exactly the same in many ways. As we repent, as we are discipled and disciplined over our faith, as we sit under the authority of the Word of God, authentically being Christians, obeying outwardly, inwardly having integrity. Well, these last three notes of this beautiful song that we will play today are perfection, affection, and the benediction. Notice how Paul writes with love as he closes and gets prepared to close this letter to the Corinthians. Finally, brethren, rejoice, be made complete, be comforted, be like-minded, live in peace, and the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all perfection, affection, and benediction. In fighting the good fight of faith, Christians face three very difficult foes, the world, the flesh, and the devil. The world is hostile to believers, just like it was to Jesus, according to John chapter 7, verse 7. Why are they hostile? Because we used to be part of the world, and now we are no longer of this world. And so because of that, the world hates us. We are commanded to not love this world in 1 John 2, 15 and 16. We're commanded in Romans 12, 2, to not be conformed to this world, but rather 1 John 5, 4, to overcome what this world has to say to us and try to get us to do. The flesh, referring to that, is just man's unredeemed human spirit. Unlike the external exalts from the world, the flesh attacks from the inside, from within. Because of that, Peter cautioned believers to abstain from fleshly lust, which wage war against the soul, 1 Peter 2.11. Romans 7 verse 18 tells us that our flesh is inherently evil. It's hostile to God. It produces wicked deeds. Galatians 5.19 describes those things. They are all the opposites of the fruit of the Spirit. We're to make no provision for the flesh. We are to cleanse ourselves from our own sinful flesh. And then manipulating the world and our own flesh to assault those who follow Jesus is the devil. The world, the flesh, and the devil. The devil being the anointed cherub, according to Ezekiel 28, who fell as an angel of light. And as, and as We must always be reminded that Satan disguises himself as an angel of light, yet he's the accuser, he's the tempter, the formidable adversary, the lion who seems to devour those whom he may. 
Like all believers worldwide, the Corinthian church was under siege from these same adversaries, the world, the flesh, and the devil. The world system was exceptionally vile in Corinth, one of the most awful cities of the ancient world. It would be akin to the Las Vegas sin city of maybe the United States. The city was so evil that the Greek language had a phrase that to Corinthian eyes meant going to bed with a prostitute. Now, can you imagine your city being so evil that it was used as an adjective to describe being with a prostitute? Much of the evil pervading the surrounding culture continued to find a hold in the Corinthians even after their salvation. As a result, they were falling victim to the same sins that they had indulged in before salvation. So as Paul drew this wonderful letter to a close, he gave a final summary of his concerns for the Corinthian church. He was not primarily concerned with their prosperity, their success, their health, their comfort, self-esteem. He listed three goals that every pastor should have for his congregation instead. Those three goals were perfection, affection, and benediction. Along with the other elements we've studied the past several weeks, these three form a strong defense against the world, the flesh, and the devil. With that in mind, let's look at these three in some greater detail. Let's start with perfection. Finally, brethren, rejoice, be made complete, be comforted, be like-minded, live in peace, and the God of love and peace will be with you. Finally, introduced as Paul's farewell remarks to his beloved brethren at Corinth. The key to understanding this verse, verse number 11, is the verb in it, to be made complete. Cartartizo. It's the same word used back up earlier in the same chapter in verse 9, and it has the sense of not adding something that is lacking, but putting things together. You are perfect because everything is there already and just needs to be put in the right order. The same verb is used in Matthew chapter 4, verse 21, where the fishermen are mending their nets. They're literally sewing their nets back together. Everything is there. There not, doesn't need to be anything added. It just needs to be put together in the right way. Paul exhorted the Christians to mend their ways, straighten themselves out, restore harmony among themselves. He says, brethren, rejoice, be made complete. Put everything together, rejoice, be happy, be joyful in spite of the debauchery and sin that surrounds you. Be like-minded, live in peace, and the God of peace will be with you. As the imperative form of this verb indicates, believers are commanded to pursue this perfection. This is an optional. As we grow in grace, we need to continually look at our priorities and change them. Be sure that they are still following what we intend to be doing every single day. As we grow and mature in the faith, our desires should change and grow to be more and more like our dear Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The Corinthians certainly needed to get things in order, but so do we. We're to pursue integrity. We should get our behavior in line with scripture. We should be spiritually whole, as this verse describes. Error should be corrected. Knowledge should increase of the Bible. Sin needs to be dealt with. Relationships need to be mended, restored. Laziness, indifference, apathy should go away. The Corinthians needed these things. And again, friends, so do we. We are coming day after day under more and more assault in our country because we have been lazy and we have not fully perfected our faith in Christ. And now the holes in our nets are showing. We need to mend those. We need to put them back together. We need to be sure that we are ready to catch this next generation for the cause of Jesus Christ. Much like the Corinthians, we need to reject false teachers, return to the original teaching that we know, the gospel of peace, the gospel, the everlasting gospel of Jesus Christ. Acknowledge Christ as Lord and Savior, and then align ourselves with what he would have for us. In order to do that, Paul, in verse number 11, gives the Corinthians four exhortations, four commands that are expressed by imperative verbs. And at those four commands, we will begin to look at next Sunday night.
for this week, leave by knowing that we have been made perfect, made complete. And as you strive to serve Jesus in the days ahead, I pray that you would strive for that same thing, strive to be made complete, made perfect, made whole through the person of Jesus Christ. Thank you for joining me for a few minutes tonight for this series on sanctification through the book of 2 Corinthians. Pray that you would have a good and godly day, and I pray that in everything you do, you would go serve your king.